So, the blood pressure cuff. Tried and true technology, been around for over a hundred years. What could be so mind-blowing about this old piece of technology? Well, I've got a little bit of piece of information for you that when I first heard it, I thought it was the greatest thing since, well, the blood pressure cuff. So this is a little bit of information that a lot of physicians don't even know. So stay tuned, we'll cover that in just a moment. we talk about blood pressures, we're usually talking about one of a couple of different methods. And the four big ones that come to mind is taking it by auscultation, where you listen for the systolic and diastolic by the Krotkoff sounds that they produce, or the palpating of blood pressure, which uh, you feel for a pulse point, and when you feel the pulse return, that's typically associated with the systolic blood pressure. It's also the asymmetric waveform blood pressure, where it measures the bounce, essentially, in the needle, and that's how blood pressure machines inside, say, your cardiac monitor or standalone device, that's how they get their readings. And there's also invasive blood pressures. But for the purposes of this week's podcast, we're going to talk about a palpated blood pressure. When we talk about palpated blood pressures, we typically picture something like this. This is a blood pressure of 160 over palp or 160 over P, whatever you want to call it. And when we see that, we usually know that that blood pressure is palpated. And when we see a blood pressure of 160 over 90, we usually see that and assume that that blood pressure is, you know, also uh, auscultated. However, this blood pressure could also be palpated as well. Palpating a diastolic blood pressure? What heresy is this? Well, what if I told you that you can palpate a diastolic blood pressure? That mind-blowing event? Well... Maybe. I learned about this a couple of years back, and when I heard about it, I had to look it up to make sure that this was actually a thing, and I assure you it is. There's been a couple of studies that uh, show that you can uh, estimate the blood pressure by palpation for the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. These studies go back from all the way down to 1961 to as recent as 2017. And these uh, studies always say the same thing that when you take a blood pressure by palpation and you palpate the diastolic, you can get within two points of the actual blood pressure and over 50% of the blood pressures, and within four points of over 70%. So this is actually a very accurate me method of taking a blood pressure, as accurate almost as auscultating the blood pressure. So how can that be? Usually when you take a blood pressure via palpation, you feel the radial pulse. Well, in this particular case, you have to change your positioning just a little bit. So you start off with the same method. You inflate the blood pressure cuff, and you feel for the radio pulse, and increase the blood pressure until you no longer feel that blood pressure, uh, you no longer feel that radio pulse point. And keep going about another 20, 30 points on top of it. And that's where you move your fingers from the radio pulse point up over here into the antecubital fossa. And you keep your three fingers over there, and just apply some firm pressure. You're not trying to, you know, squeeze and feel a radio pulse. But you just want to have some nice firm pressure there. And what you do is you let off the pressure. And when you feel the pulse return, obviously, that's the systolic blood pressure. But as you keep going, you eventually feel what's called a thrill. Now, you may recognize a thrill from when you palpate someone's dialysis fistula. The thrill is like a turbulent blood throw going through the artery. And it can be caused by either like a dialysis fistula or any other abnormality within the vessel wall that causes some turbulent blood flow. And in this case, the constriction of the blood pressure cuff causes that turbulent blood flow. So as you continue to constrict, uh, as you continue to release from where it's restricted, you eventually no longer feel a thrill at that location. And when that thrill goes away, that is where you have your diastolic blood pressure. So yes, when you palpate your breath, when you palpate your blood pressures, you can get both your systolic and your diastolic blood pressures. So the next time you have a little bit of trivia you want to throw around, or if you want to try this technique on your next patient, go ahead and give it a whirl. What are some of the other methods that you've uh, used uh, the blood pressure uh, cuff for? 
Is there another way that you've tried to obtain a blood pressure or have a novel use for this Figma mammometer? Well, let me know in the comments below. Maybe there's a unique way that you can take a blood pressure that doesn't use either method. Let us know, and until next week, keep thinking differently.